I'm joined by Stephen Poacher to talk about uh, some of the attacking innovations that are going on in football at the moment. You've seen it uh, in some of the different provinces, Stephen, haven't you? Yeah, well, listen, Shane, it's, it's nothing new, really, but it's something that, you know, has caught my mind that, you know, we, we talk about Dublin and, and being obviously, you know, ahead of the pack, but probably the, the main contenders that have emerged from the pack are, are obviously Donegal at the moment. You know, everyone's talking about Donegal and the impressive performance against Armagh, but one of the things that I've noticed, Shane, is that there there's a lot of flexibility in both teams' offensive play, particularly Dublin and Donegal's, but there's also a little bit of structure and there's also some certain set plays that they, that they can produce at different stages of the game. You know, obviously the well documented and it's well publicised now the Dublin backdoor cut, and it's not just the one run, Shane. It's the two runs that have been explained on the board here. So if you can imagine Dublin attacking, obviously heading this direction here, and you've got an inside two forward line. Now what we had was I think it was Fenton carrying the ball through from here. Kilkenny had made his run out, okay, and the other inside forward I think it was Con maybe had possibly made a run here, but it's 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 the Kilkenny man who's going to get the ball. But it's the opposite corner forward who actually makes this move because what he does is he clears out of there as well. He clears out of there as well and leads the space. So what they do, Shane, is they vacate this hole in this space. Then the cornerbacks naturally follow them. And then it's a really aggressive back door, back door cut. And it's the hand pass ball in the space. And they got their second goal against Nice from that. But they've been doing it now, Shane, for a number of years. A number of years. And they're very, very good at it. And it is a basketball type move. You can see a, a, a basketball type uh, psyche around their movement up front with the width of the producing their play as well but you never see this area really crowded you know you never see it full of bodies you know you never see any panic you know everything is very rehearsed and, and, and very structured and, and one thing I noticed about Donegal as well also is that when they were attacking what they have obviously is they've got a point man okay so they've got plenty of depth but what we actually had on, on Saturday against Armagh Shane was when Armagh were set up quite defensively Okay, Donegal had maybe two inside, maybe a Brennan and a Murphy. Okay, but they also had width on both sides of the play. And what they did very, very well at times was they transferred the ball from one side of the field to the other. So the ball came from here to here. And when it got to here, you can see your little mini overload. So this guy was being marked, okay, by the Armagh cornerback. I think it might have been James Morgan. And he's caught between two stools because what he has now is he's a little mini overload approaching him. But what actually happens, Shane, is one man follows his run out and drags a defender out of there. This guy on the sideline holds his run and then cuts across the play, taking the ball off the man in possession and popping a simple score from the edge of the D. And it was a beautifully rehearsed move. And it's something, Shane, that I've noticed in both teams over the weekend, in Donegal and in Dublin, is the flexibility in their attack but also some of the lovely fluid moves that they're producing as well. Is it the same thing over and over though? Like, is Kieran Kilkenny going to always run, a dart out and fall back on himself every single time and Con maybe the same at the other time? Or do they have different ways of doing it? Well, listen, you know, sometimes you see it coming towards the sideline. Sometimes you see them coming towards the sideline and cutting back, you know, and even a ball kicked inside to them. You know, that there is, it's not just the one move of two men coming out inside and, and cutting back. There's different, you know, there, there's, a, there's a huge range of flexibility, Shane, in the way they approach this, you know. And, and listen, I have to be honest and you have to give credit where credit's due. It's so well coached. It's so well coached. And from an analytical point of view, if you're watching the game, you know, I, I, I watched the games back again last night. You know, I watched them on Sunday night. I mean, you watch them Sunday night after watching a full day's viewing and after watching the down game. You should have watched the Sunday game on a Sunday night from a social point of view and you listen to the analysis and you watch the game. But then when you sit down and you look at it from an analytical point of view and you stop it and you pause and I like to sort of snip little videos off and send it into the lads in the club as well just to give them a sort of a picture of it because it's, it's some of the stuff that you can pick up from watching these games, Shane, and particularly the top teams like Dublin and your Mayos and your Donegals, it's absolutely class and it shows the level of detail Shane and the level of coaching that's going on at that level and if you're if you're trying to defend against that what do you do to stop Dublin's backdoor cut or that attacking move that you explained from Donegal well you've got to know that it's coming but the problem is you probably don't know when it's coming because they've got that much they have that many you know strings to their bow they've that much ammo you, you don't know if Fenton's going to come in a charge you don't know if they're going to go wide and open up the, the driving lanes you don't know if they're going to you know go wide and open up the channels for balls to be popped in so 
it, it is a damn if you do, damn if you don't. I think you need to go in with a really, really strong defensive system early in the game, Shane. I think against Dublin, one of the key things is, and I've noticed it in the recent games that they've played, is the games have been have been sort of you know brushed aside. They've never they've never been in a contest yet, at, even at half time, which is quite concerning in Leinster. You know that, it, that no one can even put a challenge up for thirty five minutes, and it, it, it nearly it's nearly pathetic at this stage now, Shane. And even some of the body language of certain players and things like that on Sunday uh, I, I, for Leash was. Was was pitiful, you know. And listen, you know, I think one of the things you've got to do in the first half, you've got to remain really, really tight. You've got to be defensively organised. I think you've got to have your plus one in there. You've got to be weary of those backdoor cuts when you're defending. You know, your goalkeeper's got to take responsibility too. There's got to be a lot of communication, a lot of talking. But you've got to bring the fire. You've got to bring the intensity. You've got to bring the heat. You know, and and to do that, Shane, you know, you need to bring a savage level of energy to the game, and, and literally, really, really leave nothing out there. And, nothing uh, out there. And are other teams doing the backdoor cut? I mean, are they are they not doing it across the board? Yeah, well, uh, listen, we we try to sort of coach it. We've been trying to coach it with our own minors, you know, quite a bit. And you know, you're running through patterns of play, and you're getting your insight too to break out and then cut back. And the problem is, that young lads, and you're doing it in training. The defender knows it's happening in training yeah. because you're you're obviously explaining it, you know, to the group. Like so, obviously, then he can maybe try and cheat a little bit and stand off. But when you're marking Dublin, you know, the the, the problem is that you're damned you do, damned you don't. If you stand off Kilkenny and try and anticipate a backdoor cut, he just takes a ball off the man's chest, pops the ball, and he turns and spins and shoots because you're three yards away. So you know, and and the men in the sideline are complaining you're not tight enough. But no, listen, there is other teams, obviously, you can see this, there's other teams doing it, but it takes a very, very, probably a well, well-disciplined team, Shane, you know, to really implement it on a consistent basis. I seen McBrady doing one at the weekend as well when he came off the bench. You know, he came out towards the ball and cut back along the end line, got a ball inside and popped it over the bar with his, with his hand, a fist pass, you know, but, but Dublin are probably the masters of creating goal chances from a Shane, there's no question. And then one thing that you brought up recently is how, uh, and maybe this was related to the Dublin footballers, that... They, they know which like foot a player is going to kick off. And I think most defenders know like that you might kick off your right, I might kick off my right, that Paul Mannion will kick off his left. But to not fall for the dummy on the right so that they can get back on their stronger foot. So do teams look at that and say, we, you know, we've got to be able to defend in such a way that we know that something like a backdoor cut is coming or you know, to anticipate? And I, I know what you're saying when you're like, well, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, because you just take it and knock it over the bar. But are defenders kind of thinking to that level across the board at all teams that you know sort of need to be second guessing what's coming? Well, I go back to the the the, the Sean Martin Lockhart days of Derry when when Peter Canavan was in his plum, and I remember a story emerging, and whether these stories are true or not, you don't know. Like, but I remember a story emerging from the camp that Sean Marty Lockhart had got one of the Derry players to try and simulate Peter Canavan's moves. And after training and before training, he would have literally, you know, been shadowing the, the, the corner forward and looking to jockey him, you know, keeping his eye on his navel, you know, all basic sort of coaching points, Shane, that you would think, you know, don't get drawn to the ball because when you get drawn to the ball, you know, I always say, you know, don't don't watch the ball, you know, watch the navel because if you watch the ball, he shows the ball one way, you go one way, you know, and he's away the other way. And Sean Cabinet was a great man for that, Sean, he shuffled or whatever, he would have stepped to the left and then dropped inside. And I think really good defenders, Shane, are taking that level of the game. You know, it's a bit like the goalkeeper in the Premier League or, the World Cup and the coach comes on and shows him where the penalty takers went you know the previous went there is no question about it that at this level here and the detail that these guys are going into there's no question about it that you know Owen Van Gallagher when he comes to Mark Paul Mannion in a few weeks time albeit if Dublin win and Donegal win take for example an Owen Van Gallagher versus Paul Mannion you can guarantee your bottom dollar that that Owen Van Gallagher's watching videos of him, he's studying him, you know, and, and listen, it would have happened at our level, Shane, even at, even at Carlo and enough in this respect, but even at that level, you know, we would have had players asking for clips of Fenton, we would have had players asking for clips of him or, or her, or whatever it happened to be, you know, and that's the key thing, you know, players at this level, Shane, are always looking for that fine edge and that little detail, and there's no question about it, those top teams are going, are going right into that level of detail.